The Nuke Proof Mega didn't manage to win this year's Enduro Bike of the Year test, but its performance still ensured it finished close to the top of the list for 2021. If you want to know more about the winner of this test, click on the card above me or the link in the description. The Mega has been a contender in this test for a number of years now, but generally fell short and never made it into our top three. That is, until now. The latest version of this highly successful Enduro race machine manages to tick a lot of the right boxes now, which is how it ended up doing so well. The revised geometry plays a crucial part, as does the solid spec, but the biggest difference when compared to its predecessor is how the rear wheel travel is now delivered. Nuke Proof's changes to the rear suspension of the Mega have really made a difference to the overall ride quality and handling. And the finished article is a more energetic, dynamic bike that still doesn't shy away from the spicier parts of the trail. I picked the Mega 290 Alloy Pro model as it managed to fit into the price bracket of the Enduro Bike of the Year test perfectly at £3,700. Nukeproof do offer one cheaper option, the Mega 290 Alloy Comp at £3,000 or three carbon builds starting at £4,350. All Nukeproof bikes did suffer from a Brexit-related price increase just after I'd ordered this particular bike for the test. But as you can see for the money, the Alloy Pro model still packs a serious punch when it comes to the parts on offer. Ahead of plunging straight into my review of the new Mega, let me first give you a little more information around the Enduro Bike of the Year test. The idea of this test is to pit the latest and greatest Enduro machines against one another and to see which one rises above the rest. Rather than order the most expensive bikes on the market, we try to keep our price bracket somewhat more realistic and opt for the bikes that we think more people are going to buy. This year's pricing ranged from £3,450 up to £4,200. It almost goes without saying that the global pandemic coupled with the boom in cycling did impact availability somewhat and as a result, there's only eight rather than the usual 10 bikes in this test. While there may be some omissions due to the availability, pricing or brands simply not wanting to be part of the test, we still managed to pack in some of the best Enduro style machines that the industry has to offer. That made for some seriously tough competition and it was obvious from the get-go that for any bike to do well here, it needed to be seriously, seriously good. To find a winner, I set about doing lots of back-to-back -back testing where I was able to pick apart the bike's differences and find out exactly where they excelled and where they struggled, if at all. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, testing wasn't as straightforward as it has been in years gone by and did take a little longer than usual. After riding lots of natural route riddled, steeper, more technical trails, I was fortunate enough to be able to head to Bike Park Wales. Despite the bike park being closed, they still allowed me to test there and continue to put the bikes through their paces. The tracks at Bike Park Wales are varied, but the speeds are generally pretty high and the rocks more abundant. I never fail to highlight just how competent a bike might be. So big thanks to Bike Park Wales for stepping in and helping out. Right, enough of that. Let's get stuck into why the Nuke Proof Mega made it into my top three bikes of the Enduro Bike of the Year test. The latest Mega 290 pumps out 160mm of rear wheel travel, which, just like its predecessor, comes courtesy of a four bar horse link system. How it's actually delivered has changed quite a bit though. The link that drives the rear shock and wraps neatly around the seat tube has been extended and the kinematics overhauled almost entirely. While the previous bike felt very much like a monster truck with masses of comfort when things got really rough, this new bike is designed to feel a bit more dynamic. The Nuke Proof engineers upped the average leverage ratio and removed the regressive hump in the kerb that made the previous Mega feel so plush and planted. They've also reduced the overall progression to ensure that riders don't get beaten up when hammering into the final part of the bike's travel. These changes should equate to a more sensitive initial touch as you enter the first part of the rear travel, but quickly transition into a more supportive mid-stroke, something needed to provide a livelier, more responsive feel. While the frame shape doesn't look wildly different, there's some subtle changes afoot, with more flow to the lines from the front to rear triangles. Less subtle are the changes to the massive down tube, which is heavily kinked before it meets the bottom bracket junction. This shaping allowed the Nuke Proof team 
to gain enough space to fit a 750ml water bottle in place, something their team riders and consumers were keen to include. Smaller details include the use of a SRAM universal derailleur hanger, which should make finding a replacement that bit easier. There's also internal tubing to help with routing the cables internally, a big time saver when it comes to maintenance. Alongside all of that, Nukeproof have ensured that there's loads of integrated rubber protection around the drive side chainstay and seat stay to help keep things quiet when trucking over rough terrain. Nukeproof have also tweaked the Mega's geometry for 2021. With five sizes available and Nukeproof's detailed geometry chart, you're in a better position than ever to find the bike that fits you. They even include specific saddle heights and offsets which, if you know the saddle height on your current bike at least, should help when making that buying decision. Hats off to Nukeproof here with this level of detail. As frame sizes increase, Nukeproof steepens the seat tube angle in a bid to put the riders of all sizes in the most comfortable, efficient seated position possible. My medium test bike's effective seat tube angle measured in at 77 degrees, which is pretty steep by today's standards. The head angle is pretty slack at a smidge under 64 degrees and helps to contribute to that lengthy 795mm front centre. A 440mm effective chainstay length pairs up with a 455mm reach in a bid to provide a well-centred ride position when stood up on the pedals. As I mentioned in the intro, despite that initial hike in price, the Mega 290 Alloy Pro still offers some great kit for the money. A RockShop Lyric Select Plus 4 cup front comes equipped with their more refined Charger 2.1 RC damper. It gives you plenty of external low speed compression and rebound damping adjustment, as well as letting you dial in the air spring using the quick and easy to fit volume spacers. This particular fork has 170mm of travel and uses a 42mm offset. The Lyric fork is matched with a super deluxe Select Plus shock at the rear. While you can't externally tune the low speed compression damping on the shock, there is a threshold lever which is easy to reach and firms up the shock nicely for big long climbs. Like the fork, it's easy enough to fit the dedicated volume spaces to alter how the spring behaves if you so wish. While many other bikes of this nature and at this price will tout SRAM's code brakes, the Mega uses the slightly cheaper Guide REs. These actually use the previous generation code calipers but are paired with the Guide levers. They might not have quite the same refined feel as the current codes and don't offer quite as much punch, but they're still mightily powerful. Nukeproof supply their own Neutron V2 wheels, which offer a 29mm internal rim width. These are wrapped with Michelin front and rear specific Wild Enduro tyres, both of which are 2.4 inches wide and use their Gum-X rubber compound. They also equip the bike with their very own bar and stem, grips and saddle. Everything is well made and has worked well throughout testing, though my backside simply isn't a fan of the Horizon Enduro saddle. On the scales, the Mega 290 Alloy Pro weighed 15.19 kilos in size medium. In an attempt to test the Mega's all-round Enduro credentials, I rode it on a mixture of trails and tracks. These varied from steeper natural trails covered in tree roots to bike park territory where the speeds are higher and the hits more frequent. Here the Mega was faced with a little less in the way of gradient but much longer, faster and rougher tracks and certainly no shortage of rocks ready to unsettle it. Setup was easy enough too, though I did reach for the shock pump a second time so I could dabble with running just under 30% sag in the shock just to see how the bike behaved and that's actually what I stuck with in the end. Otherwise, I got things dialed in pretty quickly and felt very comfortable aboard the Mega in next to no time at all. Uphill, the Mega pedals pretty well indeed, with little in the way of unwanted suspension bob when seated. Faced with steeper inclines, I tended to reach for the shock's lever to firm things up a bit and ensure I could maintain that steep seat angle. The effective top tube isn't the longest, partly as a result of that steep seat tube. So when clawing up sharper pitches and leaning further forward, it doesn't feel the roomiest of cockpits. On smoother tarmac drags, the tires don't feel like they roll particularly quickly, but it's by no means the end of the world and I for one will always take traction over rolling speed if given the choice. Thanks to the massive 10 to 52 tooth cassette, I managed to winch my way up every hill I pointed the Mega at, even when properly fatigued. 
So it will get you to the top comfortably enough if you do put the effort in. It's just not quite as easy going as the likes of the Trek Slash 8, for example. But the focus here is more about how the Mega performs downhill and the latest Mega truly is a different beast to its predecessor. The changes to how that 160mm of rear wheel travel is delivered are instantly obvious. While the old bike would sink in and settle deep into its mid-stroke, the updated version feels far more supportive and sprightly in comparison. This gives the bike a bit more get up and go when hammering along mellower trails that could feel a little more arduous and dull on the old bike. Now, the new bike feels more exciting and playful. The geometry feels better balanced too, and while I'll never be Sam Hill through the turns, I instantly felt confident pitching the Mega into high speed corner after corner, staying off the brakes and letting the bike work away beneath me. It helps that the Michelin tyres have such a prominent shoulder tread that's eager to bite into soft soil and will let you carve a tight turn without flinching. The tyres are so well damped and controlled too, which only boosts the bike's high speed credentials when skimming through rock strewn sections of trail in near silence. The rubber isn't perfect though, and can start to feel a little skittish on hard packed surfaces in the wet, especially compared to the super consistent Maxxis counterparts found on many of the Mega's closest competitors. While there's no disputing that the Mega has more of a spring in its step compared to the 2020 model, it doesn't quite offer the same pop as the longer travel white G180 or the pinpoint accurate momentum carrying monster that is the Trek Slash 8. That's not to say you can't throw the Mega around the trail as you absolutely can, it just feels a little more glued to the ground and takes a little more effort to loft over the same gaps or spring from line to line compared to the other bikes. Despite the new, livelier feel to the Mega, it still feels like a formidable beast when it comes to the rough stuff. Blast into a high speed rock garden at pace and the Mega isn't afraid of getting stuck right in. The balanced suspension does a good job of keeping the chaos separate from the rider, ensuring your hands and feet stay feeling fresh when tackling long, chunky tracks at speed. If you're willing to really work the trail's undulations, generating speed and maintaining it isn't as energy sapping as it was on the old bike, though it doesn't come quite as easy as it does on the white or the Trek. There's no denying that it's still impressively composed, controlled and fast though. And you might be wondering, well, how does the carbon frame compare to the alloy? Well, it's a tough one for me to properly answer, mainly because the carbon bike I tested previously had different wheels, a carbon bar, and the stiffer Zeb fork up front. I would say that the carbon bike feels a little more direct in certain situations, though some of this could come down to the burlier fork. The Lyric might not always feel quite as pinpoint, but it's still incredibly smooth and very, very forgiving. Either way, Nootproof have done a great job with the latest Mega, and this particular model punches well above its price tag. In conclusion then, Nootproof have managed to up the performance of the Mega, making it livelier and more fun to ride, but still just as capable when the hits come thick and fast. It's an easy bike to ride with great geometry and well-balanced suspension. It's a real plus that Nootproof offer five frame sizes and lots of detail in their geometry charts to ensure you can select the right bike for you. The Alloy Pro build seen here might not represent the very best value for money when you compare it to other bikes in the market, but Nootproof have clearly spent their money well and in all the right places, which helps when you're looking to take this bike from the shop floor straight to the racetrack. How do you guys feel about the new Nootproof Mega? Please let us know in the comments below and be sure to like, subscribe and click on that little bell icon so you're notified each and every time we upload a brand new video. Cheers.